Welcome to Electro Online. Some of the most beautiful graphs in polar coordinates are what we call the roses, the flower graphs. And I particularly like them very much. It is really neat. When I saw those the first time as a student, I go, wow, that's just absolutely amazing. How does that really work? So here we're going to give you the general shapes and how to figure out how to graph them. Of course, everybody knows how to graph them on a graphing calculator, but it's kind of nice to see how it's actually graphed manually like this. So we're going to graph these four equations. R equals three times the cosine of two theta. R equals three times the cosine of four theta. R equals three times the cosine of six theta. And R equals three times the cosine of eight theta. So what we're going to end up with is we're going to get like a, a leaf format of a flower, so to speak. The distance from the origin to the end of the leaf is going to be determined by this number right here, by this constant three. So you, if you draw a circle of radius three all the way around, then the leaves will end up hitting that circle like that. So that's how you determine the size. And the number in front of the theta will, de will determine how many leaves you have. And the way to work that is the number of leaves you end up with will be twice the number that you see here. So this will end up with four leaves. This one will end up with eight leaves. This one will end up with 12 leaves. And this one will end up with 16 leaves. So that's how you determine it. And where the leaves, where the direction of the leaves will be, well, with the cosine of the function, remember when the angle is zero, the cosine of zero is one, so r would be equal to three in that case. So for a zero angle, the first leaf for the cosine will be in the positive x direction or the to the right in the horizontal direction. And the number of leaves you're going to have is simply going to be twice the number here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take 360 degrees and divide it by twice that number, two times two, which is 360 degrees divided by four, which is 90 degrees. That means you're going to have a leaf every 90 degrees. So we're going to have one here, one there, one there, and one there. And that's how it's done. So on R equals three times the cosine of four theta, what you do here is you take 360 degrees divided by 2 times 4, which is 360 degrees divided by 8. And of course, 360 degrees divided by 8 is 45 degrees, which means you're going to have a leaf every 45 degrees. So we need a couple more lines, one in this direction and one in this direction. So you can see you're going to have eight leaves, one here, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there, like that, eight of them total. Coming over here, you can say that you're going to have 360 degrees divided by 2 times 6, which is 360 degrees divided by 12, which is equal to 30 degrees. That means you're going to have a leaf every 30 degrees. So we're going to draw those lines. So we're going to draw a line in this direction. That's 30 degrees away from here. Draw another one in 60 degrees. Of course, we have one at 90 degrees. So we continue in this direction, continues this direction. We do the same over here. We do the same over here, and then we continue on this way, and continue on this way. So that means you're going to have 12 leaves, one around each one of those lines. And finally, we come over here, we can say that we take 360 degrees, and divide by 2 times 8, which is 360 degrees, divided by 16. And let's make sure I get that right, 360 divided by 16, that would be every 22 and a half degrees. So that's equal to 22.5 degrees. So let's first put in the diagonals like this. This is 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees this way, and then we split each one, each one of them up in 22 and a half degree lines this way, 22 and a half degree lines this way, a 22 and a half degree line in this direction, and a 22 and a half degree line in this direction. So now we have 16 of these lines. Each one of them will have a leaf of the graph on it. So let's try this one first. Again, when theta equals zero, cosine of zero is zero, so three times, oh, I'm sorry, cosine of zero is one, three times one is three, so go one, two, three, and so we have the top of the leaf. And what happens then is the leaf will look like this, come through the origin, we'll go like this, and again, we'll hit the point r equals three, we'll come like this, and we'll go around this graph, we'll come like this, and we'll go around that graph, and then come back this way, go around this graph, and there you go. That's the graph representing r equals three times the cosine of two theta, where the distance to the top of each leaf is equal to three. Of course, if this was a four or five, then of course the leaves would be bigger. And that's how we do that. So here we do the same thing. Now, instead of only having four leaves, there we'll have eight leaves. So again, starting with theta equals zero, cosine of zero is one, so r equals three. So we start at this point, one, two, three, over here. And notice that this will go like this. 
So at this point, we've traveled through an angle of 22 and a half degrees. So let me go ahead and use a different color to denote that. So when we've moved through an angle of 22 and a half degrees, 22.5 degrees, I hope you can see that because it's not very bright. At that point, we come back to zero because four times 22 and a half degrees is 90 degrees and the cos of 90 degrees is zero, so r should be zero. So that would be the first portion, the first leaf. Now, what happens when we go to the next 22 and a half degrees? So when we get to 45 degrees, we go back to zero because four times, actually four times 45 degrees is 180 degrees, that would be in minus one. So when we get to a 45 degree angle, we're at negative one times three, which puts us right over here. So that means the curve continues and ends up over there at an angle of 45 degrees. So when we go another 22 and a half degrees, so now we go through another, that would be 67.5 degrees, so we add another 22 and a half degrees, then four times 67.5 degrees is 270 degrees, cosine of 270 degrees is back to zero, so that means we come back over here. And so you can see if you continue this pattern, then this pattern will look like this, come around, 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 like this, come around, like this, come around, and finally completes the circle like that. Now, to be accurate, of course, all the lines should go exactly to their origin. I didn't quite manage that, but at least you get the general shape of what that looks like when we have three times the cosine of four theta. You should have eight leaves. The distance to the edge of the leaf is three in each case. That's determined by this number, and that's how we graph that. All right, to understand how to graph this one right here, r equals three times the cosine of six theta, it's probably a good idea to build a table of values. So let's try theta, six theta, the cosine of six theta, and see what we get. So at zero degrees, of course, six times zero is still zero, and the cosine of zero is one. And of course, three times that would be, so three times the cosine of six theta, that would of course be three. Now let's move through an angle of 15 degrees. If we go through an angle of 15 degrees, 6 times 15 is 90 degrees. Now we're back to cosine of 90 is 0, and that would be 0. If we now go to 30 degrees, 30 times 6 is 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 degrees is minus 1, and that means we get minus 3. And I think now you see the pattern of what's going to happen. So at 0 degrees, 1, 2, 3, the graph is right there. 3 times 1 would be 3 right there. At 15 degrees, if we go through an angle of 15 degrees, which is right here, that's an angle of 15 degrees, then we get back to zero. Then if we go from 15 to 30 degrees, so now we go from 15 to 30 degrees, there's 30 degrees, that's the first line here past the horizontal line. Now six times 30 is 180, the cosine of 180 is minus one, and therefore three times that would be minus three. So we're pointing in this direction, we'll have an R value of minus three, which puts us over here. So that means the leaf continues on this way. It will then complete like this. So now we've gone through an angle of 45 degrees because six times 45 degrees is 270 degrees, which puts us back to cosine of 270 is zero, which makes this zero. So now we've moved to an angle of 45 degrees, which is right over here, we're back to zero. Now once we continue through the angle, we get to the next leaf right there, and then we come down here, and then we go to the next leaf right here, and we come this way, the next leaf right here, and back down, and now we go to the next leaf right here, and back down, the next leaf right here, back down, the next leaf right here, back down, the next leaf right there, back down, the next leaf right here, and you can see how that slowly works its way through this way and this way, and finally we complete over here, and that's what that graph will look like. That is a graph of r equals three cosine of six theta, and there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 leaves all the way around. Wow, what do you think that one will look like? Same kind of thing. There we realize that every time we move through 22 and a half degrees, we go all the way from zero to the next leaf. So you can see that eight times 22 and a half degrees would be 180 degrees, then we get to the negative value of the cosine. Well, let me show you, let me illustrate what that looks like. Again, when the angle is zero degrees, we have the maximum value. So cosine of zero, zero, 
It's cosine of zero is one. Three times one gives us a value for three. So that puts us the end of the leaf right there. If we then move through an angle of 11.25 degrees, eight times 11.25 degrees is 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, the cosine goes to zero. So through an angle of 11.25 degrees, we go from three all the way down to zero. Then we get to the next leaf right here. We, and then of course, when we move to an angle of 22 and a half degrees, then you can see that eight times 22 and a half is 180. 100, cosine of 180 is minus one. So three times minus one is minus three. So when we are pointing in this direction, the value is minus three. That's how we end up over here. And then you simply just go to the next leaf like this. So now we're going to go through this one right here and back down, and this one right here, and back down, and now we come around to this one, and back down, so now we come around to this one, and now we come around to this one, and now we come around to this one, and to this one. And then we go to this one, and now we have this one, and that goes to this one, and then over here, and finally we come over to this one, this one, this one, and complete this leaf right there. And now you can see you have 16 leaves, and that's how a graph like that is done. It's a lot more fun than doing it on a calculator because then you really don't see the relationship between the angle and how the value for R changes as you slowly move around the 360 degrees or two pi radians. But that's how we end up with these incredible graphs called roses. And you can see that as the angle as the, the number from the angle increases, you have more and more of these leaves. Again, even though I didn't quite draw it perfectly, the, the height of the, each of these leaves should be the same. In this case, should be equal to this number right there. And the number of leaves that you have is always twice the number that you have in front of the angle. And that's how we graph that.